Welcome. Welcome to our service for um, a Holden Evening Prayer on this longest night. Christmas is a time of year that can be bittersweet for a lot of us. Um, there's a lot of things that we're looking forward to, but it's also a time of year that brings to mind people, events, relationships that perhaps have been a part of our lives in the past, but now have changed or have gone. And sometimes we can feel extra lonely, I think, at this time of year, because if we're feeling that way, it doesn't always match up with what it seems like we're expected to feel. And so on this longest night, we gather here to remember, to share our hurts and our longings with God, and to prepare our hearts to welcome Christ. For those who are joining us on Zoom tonight, everything that you will need to follow along in the service will come up on the screen for you. So it should be simple to follow along that way. Uh, we do invite you that if you have a candle at hand or perhaps your advent wreath, we invite you to light that. Uh, maybe dim the lights in your space uh, to kind of create that sense of, of, of warmth and being close um, with God. For those of us here in the building, you will need a copy of the Holden Evening Prayer, you will need a hymnal, and also uh, this little half sheet that I believe, I think people were getting that when they came in, that has our two scripture readings, as well as the candle lighting prayers. Um, we'll be using Holden Evening to structure our service as we follow through. We'll get to a part where this will come into play. We'll have a couple of readings um, what's not on here, following the scripture, there's a short reflection, we will sing a hymn, and then move into the candle lighting prayers, and then continue on with Holden. So as we begin this time of worship here now tonight, I invite us just to take a moment of silence as we center ourselves and prepare to enter into God's presence. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine. Jesus, wonder, set us free and make us. 
may God be with you all and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. After these events, The Lord's word came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your protector. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you possibly give me since I have no children? The head of my household is Eliezer, a man from Damascus. He continued, since you haven't given me any children, the head of my household will be my heir. 
the Lord's word came immediately to him. This man will not be your heir. Your heir will definitely be your very own biological child. Then he brought Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you think you can count them. He continued, This is how many children you will have. Abram trusted the Lord, and the Lord recognized Abram's high moral character. And a reading from Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of life giving water, shining like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces twelve crops of fruit, bearing its fruit each month. The tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of the God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will rule forever and always. I think because Christmas is a season with so many traditions that it is naturally a nostalgic time of year. Uh, it's a time, because we're thinking about these traditions, that brings to mind people or places who were special to us, um, those who are perhaps still with us, but many who have gone, um, things that have changed in our lives. I think for us too, as we continue to navigate our way out of this pandemic, um, as it feels like maybe we're getting to catch our breath a little bit, we're still realizing, I think being faced with how much we really have lost, and 2022 has not been an easy year, financially, socially, environmentally. We know a lot of folks are struggling to make ends meet. We know that so many of us, and I think especially our younger generations and even our children and youth are really struggling with mental health, um, struggling with anxiety, especially just made that much more um, pressing and uh, present because of the pandemic, right? We're all holding a lot. Today, December 21st, is the winter solstice. And that means that tonight is the longest night of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Tonight, uh, today we had the least amount of daylight. Tonight we'll have the most amount of darkness of all of 2022. 
And so when we were thinking about having a service like this, it was intentional choosing this night. This is a service that sometimes goes by the name of Blue Christmas, Quiet Christmas. Um, these kinds of services are meant to offer a more quiet, reflective space that gives that opportunity to recognize how this time of year can be difficult for many of us, or at the very least, uh, for many of us, it's complicated, right? It's a mix of, of a bunch of things, a bunch of feelings. Christmas is the season of, of good cheer, and if we don't feel that way, uh, we can feel a real disconnect with what's going on around us. We might start to wonder if maybe something is wrong with us when we're struggling to be cheerful. Uh, the truth is, it is okay not to be cheerful all the time. I don't think it's possible to be cheerful all of the time uh, because there's a lot that happens in life that isn't cheery. And so as we are gathered on this longest night, in this time to honor and give space to the whole breadth of emotions that we might feel at this time of year, um, and especially those ones that don't match up with the festivities, of this season. Grief, worry, hopelessness, anger, depression, loss, loneliness. We probably could add more to those, but these are some of those experiences and emotions that we, when we feel them, uh, we often connect to images like darkness or shadow, right? These are the not nice feelings, the ones we'd rather not experience if it was up to us. And so it's not uncommon to call these the shadow or the, the dark emotions because when we feel them, it's often that sense of feeling lost or disoriented, disconnected from others, from God, sometimes even from ourselves. And there's a long history of dark and light being used in religion to speak about evil and good, right? Dark being connected to evil most often and light with good. And something that I am so thankful for, and just for me, it's been something I've noticed in the last couple of years even, that a lot of scholars, and it's especially those scholars who are black or people of color, are starting to challenge that binary of dark being evil and light being good. And they draw our attention to the gift and the goodness that can also be found and that is also found in darkness. In the Bible, while well, dark is often used as a metaphor for evil or unbelief, it's also true that in the Bible, a lot of really important things happen at night, that God does a lot of work in the darkness. Like that promise God made to Abram in the night sky. At that particular moment in his life, Abram really was in the dark. Of course, literally, right, this happened at nighttime, but very much spiritually as well. He and Sarah, his wife Sarah, had been longing for a family for some time. God had already promised them that they would have a child. Uh, time continues to pass, and that promise has not yet come to be. Still, they are longing for that child. And so this is, this is a moment where Abram is struggling to keep faith. So God shows up again, repeating that promise. God takes him out of the tent, has him look up, at the night sky filled with all those stars. And if you've ever had the chance, and I hope you have, to see a night sky when you're far away from the city lights, you know how awesome, how humbling, how dizzying it can be looking up at all of those stars in that dark, inky sky. There are far too many stars to count, and if you try, you do really start to lose a sense of even your orientation. God takes Abram out into the night to look up at the sky and promises that one day his descendants will be as numerous as those stars in the sky. 
It is such a beautiful promise in the darkest of nights. So this is a story I love. It's one that I come back to a lot. And then I always have to remind myself that it took God 25 years to make good on this promise to Abram. It didn't happen even shortly after this night. Um, 25 years of waiting and longing for this promise to be fulfilled. 25 years of doubting whether that might actually come to be. So I think that Abram and Sarah are especially good companions for those of us who feel as though we've been wandering in the dark for too long. Darkness and night can be uncomfortable or frightening places for us to be. Darkness does have that power to make us feel scared and alone. I think a lot of us really rely on electricity, on our lights at nighttime to break some of that darkness for us. But we are promised that no matter how we are feeling, that God is with us. We are assured that nowhere is too dark, nowhere is too desolate for God to venture. So even when we find ourselves feeling in that place of feeling lost or aimless in darkness, as we feel ourselves longing for maybe some more light or brightness, we can trust that God is with us in the dark too. Like a baby, in the warm darkness of its mother's womb. Even in the darkness of our lives, we are held in God's tender and loving embrace. And so on this longest night, as we gather in the darkness, we take heart in these promises that even in darkness, and I might say especially in the darkness, that God is with us, holding us tight. Amen. So I will invite us to sing together hymn number 295, 295, of the Father's love begotten.
Our worship continues with our candle lighting litany, which continues on the printed half sheet for those who are here in the building. We light our first candle for those who have died. Whether recently or long ago, their absence continues to be felt in our lives. We entrust them again this night into your care. Hold them in your loving embrace. We also entrust our hurting hearts into your loving care. May you make something beautiful and meaningful and lasting of the love these dear ones have left behind. May their memory forever be a blessing. Amen. Amen. We light a second candle for the many losses in our lives. The loss of relationships, the loss of employment or financial means, the loss of health for ourselves or others, the loss of joy and peace in the face of stress, the loss and loneliness that comes from feeling isolated and disconnected from others, the loss of hope for our future and the planet. Often the pain of these things is too much to bear or speak aloud. But this night, we bravely take a moment to name these losses to you, either aloud or silently in our hearts. This night, we place these losses and longings into your care, asking that into our open hands, you place the gift of peace. Transform our pain into peace and our longings into hope. Amen. Amen. We light a third candle for all those who are experiencing a loss of direction in life, including ourselves. We all need meaning and purpose in life, but sometimes it feels just beyond our grasp. We look around us and see so many struggling to find hope, so many making poor choices, so many living only for themselves and not thinking about others, so many questions and wonderings and doubts. Does any of this even matter? And sometimes this is us too. Remind us that no matter how alone we feel, you are always with us. Help us to recognize your presence and guidance in our lives. And use us to be that presence and guidance for others who are struggling to find their way. Amen. Amen. We light a final candle as a symbol of the hope we have in you. We take heart in the promise of Christmas. You came among us to redeem the pain and loss of this world. Come to us in our darkest nights and show us the way. 
for there is nowhere so desolate in distance that your presence cannot reach. Your love for us and for this world is so profound, unending and unconditional, that nothing can separate us from you, which is why we join our voices to proclaim, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
Scant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us whole. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all. Receive this Advent blessing for when you need a little hope. It's written by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. We are saying Merry Christmas, but these are heavy days for our struggling earth, for our countries and their leaders, our friends and families, and for ourselves. Blessed are we with eyes open to see the world as it really is, who say, where are you, God? And where are your people, the smart and sensible ones who fight for good and have the power to make it stick? This Advent we wait for the world to be made right. O oh God, help us in our fear and confusion, in our uncertainty and grief, in our despair and longing. Infuse us with a hope that doesn't make sense, with a love that doesn't add up, and with joy enough to endure the long, long nights as we wait in hope for thy kingdom come. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.